All right, so next thing. Uh, I'm actually going to put a marker right there because I might break that down and make it into its own little video so that I can link to it. So the topic for today, which is not in the boost document yet, uh, it is in the days document though, is going to be set bash options, variables, and history settings. Now, I didn't spend a lot of time on the boost document because I know inevitably after I do a boost, I know this seems completely backwards, but after I've done a boost, I know that some of the material, the order and stuff will have changed. So I'm very organic about it like this. Uh, and we're going to put day 26 down here. And uh, we'll just we'll just do this. No, I'm not going to spend too much time on this. Just, just a little bit here. And uh, I, I renamed yesterday, uh, in case you're wondering. So yesterday is about not, don't blowing yourself up and using a container. It's only 30 minutes long. And we're going to talk about bash options, variables, history settings, and all of that. But the reason there's not a lot of stuff here is because your point of reference today is my bash RC. Now I'm just use, excuse me, I'm just using my bash RC as an example. It's just the easiest for me to talk about. It's not because mine's any particularly better than anybody else's. Uh, Linux Tips has a really great one too uh, that you might want to look at. Um, he's got some really crazy magic with command prompt going on that I don't particularly like but i appreciate um and we're gonna talk about all that so uh we, and you're gonna need a system that has no configuration on it so first things first uh connect uh, to your um uh, what do you want to call it to your boost your boost uh container so let's do that uh i'm gonna go connect to my boost container if i can remember what it was oh i remember the name how can i forget so run <laughs> I'm going to hear about that one day. I am. There are people that do not approve. Now, there's no RM now, right? So, oh, wait, 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 wait. I need, I need to, do I just need to attach? I think I might just need to attach. Docker, attach. What did I name it? Oh, yeah. CP, her. Oh, I have to start it first. Yes, Docker. I will do that. Thank you for the reminder. So, Sweet Beaver is started. I'm now attached to my Sweet Beaver. Boost container. That's a random name. I have to say that. Uh, okay, so here I am. I'm root. I'm logged in. Uh, last time uh, in the in the boost, uh, this is what you should have done. If you haven't done it, make sure you do it like now, uh, or you know, stop the pause the tape. <laughs> I said tape. Stop. I don't know. You know what I mean, right? It doesn't look random at day twenty six. It wasn't. It was actually chosen. Do I need, I, I just don't want to, okay, fine. I'll rename it. Can you, re, you know what? I'm fine. I'm going to rename it right now. So we didn't cover how to rename your, your, your containers. It is doable though. I'm going to do it right now. I'm going to do it right now because it's inappropriate. I agree. I agree. All right. So uh, I know we're taking time, but you know you want to do this. At some point, you're going to want to rename it, right? So rename. Hey, look, there's a command name rename. It's because they know there's already a boost. I knew it. I knew it. All right, it's a darker RM boost. Well, that was kind of sad. We're going to rename Beaver to boost. And now I have boost. Now, I don't know what's on here. I think it's the right one. So uh, let's do this. So, 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 so. You needed to stop? No, I didn't. <laughs> Why would it? Because it because it would have overridden it because there were two already named with that name. <laughs> I totally killed it. I would have just dash F that thing if I had to. All right, so <laughs> Docker, help me out here. Docker, uh, run? No, 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 no. Docker start boost. Huzzah! Uh, Docker attach. I mean, there's. I know there's other ways to do this. We're just gonna do it that way suits me well i don't have to do any dashes i hate dashes i hate them i made a whole entire library just to not use dashes okay what do we have on here people has it been unminimized did you guys remember unminimize it we did that last time right so shell configurations are riskier than most so this is a this is i'm just gonna recap what i ended up finally with for last week for yesterday because it was yesterday was all over the place. It was fun, but it was all over the place. So yesterday we review why containers are best for learning. Shell configurations are riskier uh, than most. Um, so you know, don't do that on a system you want to have around. Uh, explore and experiment without fear on a container. Don't worry about mounting volumes. Uh, we unminimize. Did I say unminimize? Yes. Okay. 
Uh, don't worry about mounted volumes for now. Uh, we got into that those weeds yesterday and bad mistake. We eventually learn it, but not now. Okay, containers are persistent until deleted. People ask all the time, what happens to my container when I stop it or I disconnect from my computer? Up, It's still there. Unless you actively, explicitly delete it, it's still there. It's perfectly fine to persist a container while learning. So all of that, you're not supposed to do that with containers, people. Can just be quiet for now, okay? We're learning and we're making a persistent container on purpose that we're changing as a sandbox. You don't get to tell us what to do. Uh, eventually, push push to GitHub as a backup. So people ask, well, what about I'm going to put all this configuration stuff, I'm going to put all this work into this con this container in, and I don't have any access to all this stuff. No, you're going to put it on GitHub. We're going to learn how to connect your container to GitHub, your boost container to GitHub, and you're going to push all that awesome stuff up to GitHub just like you would do if you're getting paid for it. And then what? Then the people in production can pull down using GitOps and DevOps and all those buzzwords and they'll pull down your configurations just and you can follow that process for yourself later on so you don't need to worry uh we're going to start with uh, a fresh ubuntu container go review day six seven and eight as actually i retyped all that stuff and i realized it was all already there there's videos on it already you can go back and watch all that create a new user so you should already have a new user uh we did not do that yesterday i think we did it at the very end we talked about SC Scale and how that has your your baseline files in it. That's where they come from. If you want to know, you know, why where are these things coming from? Well, the skeletons are being raised from Etsy Scale and they turn into, you know, living things in your repo. Uh, understand they, what hidden means. Hidden means it begins with a dot. The end. Uh, understand what the free desktop is about. It's this initiative to tell you where to put stuff so we can all agree on it instead of having stuff all over the place. It works really well, so follow it. Um, so that's what that's all about. That was yesterday. I had to kind of review because we were all over. So we've got our container uh, boosted and everything. Uh, let's see what's inside of home. We have nothing in home. So I started with a new container. So guess what? I'm going to have to do some of those steps that I did yesterday. I might have to cut these out of the video. I'm probably going to do that. Look the other way. Un unminimize. Yes, I'd like to unminimize, please. Well, that didn't take long at all. <laughs> I have to, have to update. Never hurts to have to update. You try to install something. Why can't you install it? Because you forgot app update. Everybody always does that. App upgrade. Uh, let's try that. Hey, don't need to do that. Okay, let's do this. Let's do... I don't know. Let's see if VI is here. Is VI here? It is. Yay. So that means we did apt install VI. We did this on install software. So you already know how to do this, right? Apt install Vim. That's what you should have done already. If you haven't done that, it sucks to be you. You'll have to pause the video and go back and do it. All right. So now what? Now we're going to do a bunch of... Oh, we got a lot more people on YouTube tonight than usual. That's nice. Okay, thank you, YouTubers. Uh, hi, YouTubers. Hi from Canada. Yeah, I got people all over. I, 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 your, your print is a little tinier on my screen. It's harder to see. All right, so let's keep going. I don't have an account over here. Isn't Vim like a cleaning product? <laughs> I think it is. Uh, I'm from Iraq. What? <laughs> Thanks for joining. Like, you troopers over there, you like people, you're like, like, yeah, stand up all night. Uh, I have to set, sip a coffee too, you know, cheers. I knew, I knew pushing to YouTube was a good idea. So there we go. Uh, you know, welcome. And I'll try to notice you. It's a little bit harder. I don't have it bridged to the thing yet. So what I do respect my YouTube viewers, uh, even though they tend to have questions, which people don't because they can't see my description and all that stuff. Anyway. We need a user. We don't have a user. So we already covered add user. Go back and watch that day. I'm going to use the fast and easy way using add user. There's also a user add, which is more work. Um, add user, by the way, is a Perl script. You want to see? Uh, yeah, watch. VI, which is a little trick here. It back ticks, twitch. You can, you can open up a file and get its path. So if you do which here, so you can do which, what are we talking about? Add user, a little trick here. Add it, right? So let's say you want to look inside that file, but you want to type all that out. Just go back up to your history, set v oh, history, and then VI, and then put that around in backticks. And then those backticks will be replaced with what came out of it, which was the path. And so now you go to the path, boom, user bin Perl. There you go. Perl is a formal part of the Debian system for adding users. So we're going to add a user. Uh, oh, I need to tell what kind of user I want. I'm going to call the user me. Okay, I'll call the user me. Um, copying files from Etsy scale. Look at how polite it is. It told me exactly what it's doing. Uh, what's the password going to be? Hmm. 
password. <laughs> it's just a container. If you name your password, pa if you make your password password, you should be ashamed. But uh, I'm just gonna leave these. This this is this got added for school or something. But the reason I like it is because it it actually does what you expect. It 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 makes you uh, a directory here. And so there you are. Oopsie, I cannot type. The, I do not claim to be a good typist. Um, so anyway, so there, and then you got, you know, your stuff there. You can like uh, get ent me. There's my, oops, get ent password me. And here's my account. Let's do get ent group me. So there's my group me. So it sets it all up for you and it creates a directory and it like does all. So that user ad doesn't do that. Just go back and watch the day and you can, you can catch up on that. Okay, so so now I have an account name. So, and now, anybody remember, raise your hand, by raise your hands, who remembers how to become uh, this other user without leaving the system and re-logging in? Anyone? Does anyone remember? Oh, you're thinking hard. He knows it. That means he knows it. He's not going to give it up. Okay, I'm going to say it. Sue to me. <laughs> yeah. Okay, as su dash me. Ooh, say Farrick, how's it going? So, uh, call Steve. Those are all uh, su. Yeah, Muhammad, you got it. So, you might think it's sudo, but we don't need sudo here. Why? Why don't we not need sudo here? I really need to turn your font up. I cannot see you guys. Muhammad, you're kind of tiny font for me there. Uh, sue me. <laughs> I could not have planned this better. Hi, Seth Eric. Hey, Alberto. Yeah, Sumi. So Sumi, this is now my favorite thing of the night. Sumi, if you sue me, this seems to be an, an unwitting theme of the evening. Without the E, then it actually becomes in. Good job, Alberto Muhammad out there in YouTube land. So we got it. We got it. We're in. Okay. They didn't need anything else. Now, there is a problem though, right? Does this look like my home directory I'm in right now? No. So, uh, I'm going to put here, uh, use S su dash uh, to become me. <laughs> I, or whatever. Yes, Ross, 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 Rossim, Rossim. That's that right? Uh, use this unit to become me or whatever. <laughs> I'm like, it's like the least rev reverent syllabus you've ever read. <laughs> okay. Um, so anyway, we have a problem here, Houston. If there is a problem. What's the problem? What's wrong with Sumi? The Sumi is not quite it. I want to see if you guys can come up with this. This is more fun when you figure it out. What is the actual thing? Does anybody know? You, you might know it if, you, if you're familiar with the good old sudo version of this. Sudo space, su space, what goes after that? Anybody ever know? Some of you might have done it. If not, if it's your first time, please don't feel bad. I'm not trying to embarrass you. I'm, th I'm, I'm thinking a couple of people out there might know. I know Cypheric knows. He just doesn't say in it. So, so we're going to do this. Su dash space me. And what does that do? What's the difference? Notice the difference? All right, so right away, right away we see that there is a tilde here, and that now means that we are home. Before we weren't, we weren't home. We were wherever we were at. In fact, let me prove it to you again. So let me do it again. So uh, I'm gonna go back into root directory, right? As to me, I'm me, but I'm still in the root directory. And this is super duper important when we get into talking about configuration, because because I guarantee you there's somebody listening to this video right now who is going to do this and they're going to forget the dash and they're going to go, where's all my configurations? I don't have any configurations. I can't see anything. No, my, my beautiful colors, where are they? And they won't work. Why? Why won't they work? Because you're not doing a login shell. You're just getting a shell and the difference is subtle but important. One of them runs all of your uh, profile and hash RC and all that stuff we're going to go through today and the other one doesn't. It just, it does a minimal thing and it doesn't think you're interactive. So it doesn't change over and log you back into your account. Okay. So that's super duper. So just remember, it's like if you're, if you're you and you want to do a sudo, you know, you can do all that other stuff. By the way, while we're at it, I'm going to teach you something today that, uh, 
that I added back to the earlier boost and I forgot to tell you about. What I'm about to do, well, I'm debating about whether I should do it at all. I kind of feel like I need to, though. So let's install sudo, shall we? Because I want to teach you sudo while we're going through this. I don't want you to get used to getting into the root account because you won't have that when you don't have a container. So let's get you into using sudo. So let's go ahead and install sudo on here. Uh, install, uh, you should already have it actually from the earlier days. If uh, don't have yet. Why? So apt install sudo. And I'm going to teach you something that is really, really bad to do. But when you're doing it in a container space, it's totally okay. And I know there's going to be Unix people out there that are literally going to throw tomatoes at their television screen. But we're going to do it anyway. All right. So if I go, if I log in as me, right? All right. So now I'm logged in as me. Let's pretend like I'm logged in, right? Brand new account. And I didn't have root access. Maybe even maybe I'm at a university and it's just my own account and I don't have admin privileges. Like if you were on Pico CTF, which you should look at, by the way, from Carnegie Mellon University security training. Super cool. You get your own account. Uh, so let's say you go over there and, you know, you can look up your ID, by the way. So there's your, if you type ID, there's all your numbers and everything, right? So you can tell you're a thousand, you know, you're a regular user. Now, if you wanted to have permissions to do all that install stuff, you'd have to type sudo. Let's pretend like I want to install something here. Uh, let's, let's, in, let's install, what should we install? How about tmux? So let's just sudo install tmux. Um, uh, sorry, app, ah, app install tmux. And we're going to type the password, which is in my case, password. <laughs> I'm not in the suitor's file. Oh, me, oh, my. Okay, so I'm going to be reported at pain of death. So we're going to fix that because we already have it. So i oh, yeah, watch this. So there is actually a way to do this right, and then there's the way that I do it. Which one do you want to learn? <laughs> so vi sudo or vi sudo is the actual command you want to do here. Uh, and so, again, this is... Um, I, I probably will move these steps up earlier on the boost when we talk about sudo, but since I did them before, didn't do them before, we'll go ahead and do it now. Uh, so add uh, me to sudoers with uh, vi sudo. So, uh, yeah, so there's this command called vi sudo, and there you go. It actually opens sudo. Now, the thing that's important about this is is because in the old days, the reason they had to use vi sudo is because if there's somebody already editing the sudo file and you guys step on each other, bad things happen. So it's left over from the, the times of it being a multi-user thing. As you can see here, it's sudoers.temp. And then what it's going to do is going to move that file over on top of the other one. Uh, if you want to live dangerously, as I said, uh, you could do vi etsy sudoers. Uh, wrong one. Oh, I'm not. Oh, wait. <laughs> I'm on my own system. What the hell? What am I thinking, Rob? I'm not doing the right thing here. I keep thinking I have Tmux on this system. Obviously, I don't. So, uh, vi etsy sudoers, right? Same thing. It's just read only. And so then when you make your change now, you just have to write it down. And, and if you want to do that, it's totally fine. But if you can just do vi sudo if, if, if that, yeah, that's the proper way to do it. Okay. So, uh, uh, and with vi sudo, um, uh, vi etsy sudoers, and you don't know about what sudoers are, and you don't care right now. So I'm only going to tell you the one thing you need to. Again, the purpose of the boost is to tell you what you need to know about, and then go learn it. Right, not necessarily how much you need to learn. Most people don't need, especially in the containerized world right now. We do not need to mess with this stuff at all. All right, um, and. Uh, root needs no sudo. Yeah. Well, we're not going to use that one. So it's going to get loud here. I apologize. My, my family just came over. So and they're kind of loud. Um, so here I am. I'm, I'm on this line. Uh, be careful in here. If you break something, you know, you bought it. You, but then you what? You just restart your container. You got a new one. You don't care. Right? This is why we did this. So I'm going to copy this line with YY. And I'm going to change it to be the name me. And now I have all perms. I'm basically root without being root. Right? And if you want to even get worse, 
make sure you get the syntax right. That's the worst part of sudo is if you get the syntax wrong, forget it. Nobody sudos anywhere. <laughs> but it's okay because we just have to exit. We're back to root, right? Again, this is why we did containers. So we have nice, nice, happy time. If you were doing this on a system you just installed the Linux on, you know, that would be dubious. That would not be a wise decision because then you have to redo your whole thing if you screwed up. So, uh, but I just put this in here. I want you to see it. Here it is. So what day is this? This is on day, this is on day back and all this stuff, day 12. So on day 12, here is the forbidden line to add right here. Uh, we're just going to put no password colon in front. Yeah. <laughs> Once again, sue me. I don't care. It has to be no password. I think it's funny that they, that they, that they left WD without the do RD just because. So if you put that in your sudoers file, now you're really all powerful. You can do all kinds of crazy things. So, so check it. We can do, um, so, so watch now. So, okay. Assume me, assume me. <laughs> all right. Now watch. Wait, I, I did it wrong. Su dash me, of course. Thank you for the reminder. Uh, you are in the container. God, yes. I mean, if you're not, then yeah. <laughs> so now watch. Now watch. Now when I want to do something fun, sudo. Oh, I don't know. What can I do that's Rudy? Um, install. How about that? apt install tmux. And it won't even ask me for a password. It's like super happy to do my bidding. It's like, make me a sandwich. No. Sudo make me a sandwich. Here you go. And that's the XKCD. It's very famous. There's t-shirts with that on it. Mm. All right. So this is all pretty basic stuff for some of you. That So uh, there are more advanced people out there like, oh my God, this guy. But I, I'm going slow. As far, slow as I can. So, and now we have a container. We have our sudo. We have, we have stuff on here that we can do. And now we can start actually editing our bash RC. Okay. So, uh, I, I really, really encourage you uh, to pause the video and to do a lot of this stuff with me right here. You found it. You found the XKCD? We have to show it. Um, it's kind of rehashing the other day, but oh well. So there it is. <laughs> make me a sandwich. What? Make it yourself. Sudo make me a sandwich. Okay. Sudo make me a sandwich. Your opinion goes to Dev Null. Um, all right. So... Uh, my poor Pomodo, Tom, or how much more time do I have? I tell you what, I'll give myself 30 more minutes to finish this. Pomo duration, uh, 30M. And you're, I'll show you how to install your own Pomo here too pretty soon. We're going to do all this. Okay. So I'm back on my on my boost system, on my boost container, and it doesn't do anything. It doesn't have color. Uh, I can barely see what's here. Uh, I want to see all the stuff here. So I do ls space dash A, and I see... All of my files. What's this bash history file? What could that ever be? So there's nothing wrong with experimenting here. You can use your your commands to practice this bash history. You can see that it's got a bunch of stuff on the end. Hey, that looks like what I've been typing in. No surprise there. Bash um, uh, once per session. We're saying that you only need a sudo password once per session. It's not a massive inconvenience. Uh, right. But yeah, it, it is. You're right. Good point. You know, I mean, it, it depends on, it's, it's not procession. It'll eventually time out, John. Yeah, it'll, it depends on your system. Sometimes it'll time out after five, 10 minutes. It just depends. Uh, that's my, my impression. Maybe I've got it wrong. So anyway, let's um, tell bash log, log out. I've never used bash log out, but this is the code that runs. And there's no colors. Oh my God, we got to fix this right away. Uh, we're going to, that's, uh, is it a timeout? Yeah. So, I mean, in your container for the boost session like this, you don't want to be bothered with your password. It's just a stupid container, right? That's the only time you should ever do that to your suitor's file. There, I said it. Um, this here is a bunch of shell code that runs when you log out. Apparently, it clears your console. It's nice and helps you be private and everything. I didn't remember that one was there before. Oh, well, we'll leave it. doesn't matter. Uh, we're going to be really customizing the crap out of all this. So... Uh, and then you have um, profile. So profile is executed, as it says here, by the command interpreter for login sessions. 
So when you log in, any log, remember talking about the dash or, you know, you, lots of ways to log in if you're remotely connecting and all that stuff. Or even when you exec in and you reattach for the first time, every one of those times, profile gets run. All right. Um, and uh, because your shell is bash, and we talked about that another day, but uh, get and password. Uh, there we go. So because our shell is bash, uh, it also, it even tells you right in here, you can go read it. By the way, th this is what I always do. Set that show VI, right? And you get vi.profile, there you go. So, so there you are, right? Uh, I think this is so stupid they put a dot there. It should have been source. Why keep it so unobvious? There's your first customization right there. <laughs> Change the dot to the word source. Come on, it's bash, or is it? Oh, it's not bash. That's why, because it's not bash, it's POSIX. I get it now. I fully understand. I take it all back. Uh, so that profile is for anything, right? If this file, uh, this file is not read, oh wait, it's not read by bash, if dot bash profile or bash login exists. Uh, see, use the share startup files, for example. Okay, so this actually brings us to the first, uh, Real serious question, uh, to dot profile, uh, or not to dot profile. Uh, and you can delete this file if you have bash as your shell and you know you're already going to have bash as your shell very happily and easily and never care. However, the reason I hesitate is because my original training was don't ever do that because dot profile works no matter what your shell is. So if you you know, if you have Z shell or you have some other shell or something like that, the downside of that is that you have to maintain that file. So I actually have a dot profile in my collection that I make point to uh, my bash profile and just make a make it executed. Uh, another reason that you might want a dot profile is I don't I don't I don't even want to justify this. Is anybody we have any machine learning people here? So we have we have machine learning people and what they do is they use things like Anaconda that mess with your profile when it installs software. First of all, if you ever mess with somebody's personal RC files, .profile and .bash RC, in your install scripts, shame on you. You should go to one of the seven planes of hell because there is no justifying screwing with somebody's personally crafted RC files in their home directory. And there are applications that do the most horrible of which recently is Anaconda, and a lot of machine learning people are, are using that. There are others. There are others that will do it, and they will happily, and what you'll do is you'll see, you'll see something down the bottom of your profile. It's like, sometimes they'll ask you, but usually I think Anaconda actually asks. Most of them don't, though. They just happily write crap at the end of your .profile file, and they expect you to leave it there, or it stops working. I'm telling you, if you think that's a good idea, you need to re-examine your life choices from the beginning, including like not sucking on lead chips. Um, so honestly, that is like horrible. Do not mess with people's dot profile. Uh, as, does it? Node versioning adds to the dot bash RC? Oh God, that's even worse because it assumes they're gonna have bash RC. Seriously, do you need to make my opinion of NVM go any further in the toilet along with Ryan Dahl, who threw NVM under the bus in 10 Things I Hate About Node at a Node conference, no less. <laughs> it was hilarious. If you want to go to Node at NVM, be my guest. Have fun with that. Well, it screws up your RC files because it just feels like it has more power than you. Uh, <laughs> I don't care why they're doing it. You know what? If, if some NVM or Anaconda tool set maker thinks that you're so stupid, you can't add a configuration line to the end of your bash RC file with a terminal editor, then you shouldn't be using a computer. In fact, you shouldn't be driving a car. You should probably be, you know, in a padded cell somewhere. I mean, seriously, if, if you can't be trusted to, to maintain your own profile and, and copy and paste a line into it that they tell you, 
or, or even authorize the addition of that line, whatever. Here's the problem. All these things, they, they get installed again. What happens? You get another line in there, and then it breaks your path, and all of a sudden you can't find any of your files over there. I'm telling you, if you're a software developer who does this in your install scripts, you should be punished severely. Uh, 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 easy life. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Just install all your NPM stuff straight into your global without asking any questions. <laughs> Don't do that. Don't ever do dash G on your NPM install. Seriously, people, maybe on a container, maybe on a container. It's, I, I can't, don't get me started. Don't get me started. One step at a time. They're like, why, why? We get one step at a time. All right. The hackers all know. The hackers are all out there watching this. They're like, yes, please do that. <laughs> do you want to? Uh, oh, okay. I'm back to normal now. Uh, install with root privileges, right? <laughs> okay, so so here's your dash profile. So here here's the the first thing we're gonna do. Don't cry about it. We're removing dot profile. Oh my god. And why don't you need to worry about that? Because what if you want it back? Where is it? This is why I told you this. I told you that there is already oops dash a right. I told you there's an Etsy skill right. So if you need any of that stuff back. If, if, like when you're screwing around with stuff and you want to revert to the system default, all you have to do is, in fact, even if you kill your path, you can do bin cp etsy scale. Let me show you how to do this. Slash dot profile and copy that to tilde. So I'll put it inside your home directory and boom, your dot profile is safe and sound again. Okay. So you, even then you don't need to really worry. That's why I showed you. All right. So, uh, uh, so, all right. So I say no dot profile. In fact, I need to change that in mind. I'm going to go do that after this. Uh, you really don't need it. Uh, in the old days, you might have needed it if you were going to use a different shell, but you don't really need it anymore. Uh, we're going to remove that. So no dot profile, sue me. Uh, let's look at these other files uh, real quick. So Vim info, as you can see, is it a file that's being dynamically updated as we go. It's got it's got your history. It's got your buffers in it and all kinds of stuff. We are going to do this uh, later, probably. Uh, next week sometime we're going to be getting our all of our we're going to go through the vimrc on all of that okay and then uh i don't think you need the bash log out i i you know i i applaud their attempts at what they're trying to tell me but i mean do i really want to clear my console no i i i don't leave shit on my console that's why would i put anything on my console that has passwords in it anyway i mean really why would you do that no, never, ever, ever print your password to the screen. Ever. There's never a need to. You can always cat it or put it into a variable, not environment variables, but, you know, things like that. You never, ever need to type it. And I've learned this really a lot as a streamer with tokens and stuff. I would write applications that then, I, you know, I would open it in VI and change where the token was. And then I would use commands like cat and echo and thing to, to put them into variables without me ever having to have it even touch the screen or my history. So I think that's a waste. I think that's based on, you know, making up for dumb people who type their passwords on the screen without any hidden asterisks. So let's try this. So like if you type your password right now, just to show you, right? So can you see my password? You actually can because it's up here, right? So if you're a streamer, be careful of that. Uh, but it won't care because I, sometimes you can put policies on it. It's like, no, you can't use that one. Sorry. <laughs> Password unchanged. All right, we're done with you. I did Control D to get out of that, just in case you're wondering. Uh, and what else are we gonna do here? We got any comments from the YouTubers? Yeah, people are laughing. Okay, that's good. I hope that's good. <laughs> All right, so we got it. We got another uh, another twenty minutes or so here. So what else are we gonna do? We are gonna do. We got rid of our profile. We're gonna start with a clean slate, people. All right, so bash history is still there. It's going to be there. Bash RC. So now we just have a bash RC. Now, this is where things get tricky, right? Because uh, the bash RC file uh, is a really good way, place to start. The one that's here already. It's actually a really good place to start. Remember, remember all that time we spent learning shell programming? Yeah, remember that? This is why. You can't presume to customize your bash shell RC, bash RC file, until you know how to code in shell, which is why we learned to code in shell on day whatever. What day was it? 
I remember. Go back and watch. I'm gonna I'm gonna, I'm gonna make a, a reference to that just because. So what was it? Shell coating. Uh, do do do. I had to tell the people who are just watching us for the first time. Uh, we did like two or three or four or five days of shell coating. Loops and signals. Yeah, it was back. Yeah, day day fourteen or so. All right. So you need to know how to code in shell before you can even touch your batch RC. Promise me you'll do that. Ironically, the first thing we have to learn in the batch RC is the one thing we didn't cover during those days <laughs> that I said, make sure you go cover it. And that's called case. You remember when we learned about glob pattern matching with globs? When was that? Three days ago? Now you know why. Okay. Because why? What is this star matching? Anybody want to say so? What is the star matching? What does this even mean? Right? It's a glob. I'll tell you that. It's a glob. It's a pattern matching glob. It says match anything that has zero. Yeah. The star, star of the universe. It means anything. Right? Match anything at all uh, ahead of it that has an eye in the middle of it. And then anything, zero or more of anything after that. And then this means zero more of anything. So this is what's called a default in a case statement. So, uh, and this reverse notation, by the way, comes from ALGOL, A-L-G-O-L. I'm pretty sure that's the original language that did that and ruined everybody else. So if you're not running interactively, don't do anything. This is actually a really great place. Before you start tweaking your bash RC, maybe read what's there. And I think we'll do that today. Uh, so, and, and we're going to revisit this thing individually, but I, I kind of want to just give you a quick overview of it. And that'll probably wrap us up for the day. So uh, what this does, remember that thing about running with SU dash and running with a login shell or just a regular shell interactively? Well, this is how, this is the standard way to tell whether you're interactive or not. And that is POSIX compliant. And that will work on, I pretty much think, any system, Unix, AIX, or whatever. And that's, there are many, many, if you go to Stack Exchange and say, how can I tell if I'm running interactively? You'll get like a ton of opinions about how to do this. And this is the standard way Bash has chosen to do it. All right, so then history control both. Uh, you're going to get history command. You know what? Uh, uh, do, 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 do. I might have to change the name of today's boost a little bit. But we'll, we'll keep going. So uh, don't put duplicate lines or starting lines in place in the history. Uh, I really don't care. Uh, it, you can do history. But so, but I, this is an example of an option. Remember Globstar? We talked about that, right? Don't You don't have to do it right now, but... Glob star, you know, you remember no clobber? No clobber, you guys remember that one? We're going to do all of these on our own day, so don't don't spread. It's supposed to be today, but uh, let's keep going. History files, check window sizes. Uh, less, might, we might be able to do this today even. Less pipe. So this is checking to see whether you have less installed. It's a pager. And if you do, it's making it nice and better for you. It's fixing some things. I don't fully understand that one. Hey, look, here's a parameter. Remember this right here? What does that mean? What does this mean right here? That's a parameter expansion. You probably should have read about those in shell time. That means use dash as a default, or, or it means use a, uh, nothing as a default, I think. We have to go look. Actually, let's go, let's go figure it out. Let's do it. Man dash. Uh, we'll search for parameter expansion. And we'll keep going for parameter expansion. Where is it? Here we go. And we're going to go find there the one that the dash. There it is. So parameter expansion. Use default values. If parameter is unset or null, the expansion word is substituted. Otherwise, the value parameter is substituted. So since there's nothing really there, I think it's just the same as being blank. Actually, don't know why they have a dash there at all. It doesn't make sense to me at all. Uh, I'm not going to say anything. <laughs> There's definitely some shell code in the standard Debian distribution that is questionable. Um, so, uh, as you guys know, remember all these single, all of these single brackets. I think it's actually a super bad pattern. I would never do that in a batch file in a million years. I would do double brackets uh, for reasons that we talked about with Globstar expansion safety. Uh, I think it's a stupid idea that they did that, but it doesn't matter. Uh, it doesn't crash by giving default of essentially none null. Uh, Debian Shroot? I don't think so. No, because it's already in quotes. I, I think it's I think it's unnecessary, but that'd be fun. Figure it out. There you go. You figure it out. Tell me. 
Uh, anyone else in YouTube? No, no. Okay. So Etsy, uh, Davian Schrute, uh, then Etsy, Davian Schrute, set variable identifying the Schrute you work in. I don't work in a Schrute. This whole thing can go. In fact, we're going to start ripping this up. Uh, make it so it doesn't crash by giving default. Uh, you already said that. Uh, fancy prompt. All right. So this color terminal detection is a thing. Uh, now, right now, it doesn't think that we have a, a terminal of any kind. So, because there's no terminal variable set. And we're going to do that later, but you can fix this one right away by doing this. Term equals, actually, let's do an export. Export term. That means everybody under us gets it as well, not just the top level. Export term equals x term 256. Did I get that right? I'm going to cheat. I am. I'm going to cheat and look at mine. <laughs> I have. To, do you think I have this memorized? I don't. I do not. There, oh, it's 256 color. Okay. There we go. X4256 color. Exec bash. Oh, we have color now. Uh-oh. No clobber is not an option. I screwed it up. <laughs> oh, oh, no. Whatever will I do? All right. So let's go back and fix. Did you see what I did there? So I reloaded the bashrc file by doing exec bash. When you exec bash, what it does is it runs a new bash and it replaces the one you're currently using. It doesn't run a, no, a yeah, this will also work. The difference is, is that that runs a subshell and then you get this like infinite tree of subshells. So if you're going to do that to reset your settings, do exec bash. The only thing this won't do is it won't remove aliases and stuff that you have removed from your bash RC because it's not proactively removing them unless you there's a way to do that but you have to do that. okay so let's go back to editing our bash RC and then we have like 10 minutes and we'll we'll like rip up everything so there we go um uncomment for a color prompt uh force color prompt all this wonderful craziness that i totally disagree with especially using tput uh, T put is a way is a thing that was built long, long time ago to unify the commands used for all the different terminals that existed. That's not a thing anymore. There's just like terminal emulators now, and they pretty much are all Xterm 256 color terminal emulators, all of them. So T puts kind of ancient and unnecessary for the most part. Uh, there are some isolated cases where you need it, but. No, just, I mean, maybe somebody out there has a situation that I'm going to get an angry comment. It's like, oh, <laughs> so here's a color prompt. This is where, uh, uh, you tip it to reset. Well, yeah, you don't, you don't, you don't need it though. I, yeah, you can use it, but, uh, you can just do reset. So if you screw it up, right. If you screw up your terminal, whoops, reset. Uh, I wonder what reset is reset. What is reset? It's user been reset. I wonder if it's a script. Nope. <laughs> Interesting. I don't know what it is. Is it tput uh, to get the terminals with? Yeah. If you're using tput to get the terminal with and stuff like that, that's like reasonably okay. Uh, that's that's how I've used it. That's what I've used it for. Uh, yeah. There are occasionally times need, like if you need to center stuff and thing. Yeah. I mean, I guess there's a few isolated cases for using it, but I for general cases you don't you don't need it. Um, uh, color prompt. So here you go. Here's another case statement. If my term is X term, uh, or RXVT, then go ahead and make this fancy thing. prompt. We're going to do all the prompt on its own day. Don't you dare worry. Uh, dirt colors. We're going to talk about dirt colors on their own day. Um, uh, uh, there's a bunch of aliases here to make colors a thing. Uh, GCC for compiling flags. What? I didn't know you could do GCC colors. I'll add that to mine back again. That wasn't there before. LS aliases, I hate them, but everybody uses them. What's an alias again? It's a way to type something that keeps going. Uh, oh, what is that? Alias for long running commands and like sleep 10. Sleep 10 alert. Interesting. Look at that expression, man. Remember we're talking about regular expressions? Do you understand why we cover regular expressions before we open this up now? Do I have to make my case further? <laughs> I mean, you still don't know regular expressions. You're still trying. I know you are. But at least you know what they are, so you know what to go study when you see it. You're like, otherwise you wouldn't even know what that is. What the hell is that thing? This is a regular expression. And, oh my stars, it looks like it's using Perl. It is. 
It's using Pearl. It's using a Pearl-ish reg X. See, it's got the backslash S. What does that mean? Anybody remember? What's backslash S? Anybody remember that? We just covered it like two days ago. Literally two days ago. What what class does that stand for? This is zero through nine. Nobody remembers. They don't dare say. Backslash S is any space character. Yes. Backslash capital S is any non-space character. Okay. Uh, we did this one a long time ago, uh, but we'll do it again. In shell scripting, dollar question mark means the last return value of the previous command that executed. So here's something cool, though. I want to say this about sed. In fact, when we covered sed, I made a big deal about people who don't use semicolon. They'll, people, instead of using a semicolon, so what this is doing is it's doing this full-blown replacement. It's basically taking all, anything that matches this at the beginning of the line. Carrot means beginning, right? And it says, make it empty. Just delete it. And, and then semicolon means, but get ready, we have another one. And it tells another thing to do. And that says, match if there's any semicolons, ampersands, or bars, uh, followed by any spaces, optional spaces, uh, and the word alert, delete it. Okay. Uh, but I did, I make a good point when we did the limited data about said people will do this exact same thing. Instead of doing this right here, they'll do this. They'll, they'll, they'll do another said dash E here and they'll like have like 20 said calls when they could have done the whole thing in one call. So don't do that. Pretty sure I just broke it, but oh well. How do you exit? How do you exit VI without saving? It's a little bit of a review. How do you exit VI without saving? You screwed something up. You know you screwed it up. You want out without it committing it. Very common situation. <laughs> okay, colon. W. No, not W. <laughs> yeah. Colon Q exclamation point or shift CZ. Good. You know what? Shift CZ is not in the standard VI I found out. We were finding it. No, ZQ isn't. Not ZZ. ZZ is say, so it's ZQ. ZQ, which is not standard VI, I found out the other day. Yeah, found that out the other day. So my favorite is colon Q exclamation point. I've been doing that for years, 25 to be exact. Uh, so that's my favorite. You can have yours. It's not control C. Uh, anyway, and, and ZZ is the, the, you know, Anytime people give you crap about exiting VI, it took you two years to exit VI, just remember ZZ Top, that wonderful band from the 80s. <laughs> I, used to play, I used to play Legs for my like 10 to 18 year olds, the, the music video, to help them remember ZZ Top, and I guarantee you they never forgot that command again. <laughs> I'm like watching the video and I'm like literally sweating because I'm like, I think this might be a little above their rating level for these 12 year olds. If you don't know what I'm talking about, go watch the ZZ Top legs video <laughs> or any of ZZ Top's videos. That's all I have to say about that. Um, as we were talking, so Bash Alias is, all right, so it's tradition, it's tradition to have all your aliases in a separate file. I think it's stupid. I'm going to tell you why. I think that's stupid in a second. Uh, but spoiler alert, it has to do with having only one file so you can copy it to another machine easily. You, you don't, I, I've, I've gone through so many different versions of this. Most recently, I had all of my Bash RC was split up into like 25 different files. And I was like, what was I thinking? And now I'm working in a professional environment where I'm working with containers and nodes and stuff all the time. And I need, just as I'd always said, I need to be able to get my configuration over there quickly and being able to copy SCP a single file or pull it down with curl right off the internet beats having multiple files every time. Uh, I can get my entire basic system, batch RC, Vim and Tmux, if they have Tmux, in three file calls, that's one curl call. And I don't have to do any other further setup. Now, of course, I've got workspace containers and dot file repos that I can run setup on and all these other ways if I have to set up more of a nest at the, at the place where I'm, you know, going to be working. But but if you just need 
to get your favorite aliases and everything immediately, uh, you can do that in like literally 10 seconds if you have internet access. So, so there you go. Uh, uh, Shop OX POSIX, what is that about? Enable programming completion features. You don't need to be able to enable this if it's already enabled at Etsy Bash RD and Bash RC, Etsy profile sources, blah, blah, blah. We're going to have a whole day on completion and we'll talk a lot about that. All right. So we're going to do something that's going to probably scare you all. And we're going to delete everything. Yeah. They are. Yep. I'm going to practice uh, Prime Agent's favorite command, DAP. So, uh, we're going to delete the history control. We're not going to do everything except for this interactive thing up here. All right. So if you're in here, remember, you don't need to worry because it's all an Etsy skill, right? So DAP, we're going to delete that. DAP, we're gonna, you know what I do? I did period. Why? I don't need to type all DAP again, do I? I don't have to type DAP every time. I can just type period because it repeats the last command. So I'm going to get rid of this. I get rid of this. Again, if you want to read all those fancy letters and words and stuff, fine. Go read it in Etsy skill. It doesn't need to be in your bash receipt anymore. All right? I mean, you might be able to leave this guy here. You know what it does. Uh, you don't need that. That's stupid. Uh, you don't need that. That's dumb. You don't need that. Force color prompt. Eh, yeah. Uh, we're going to get rid of that. We're going to get rid of this. All that color stuff. We're going to do our own prompt. Uh, we're going to get rid of the prompt. What I also want to show you is what happens when you get rid of everything, what it actually what it actually does. You don't die, right? We're getting rid of the directory colors. We're going to do all that. We're going to make all of this on our own. We're going to get rid of this one. Yeah, we're going to get rid of this one. And again, the end goal of this is you'll have this nice, pretty bash for C that you can use anywhere uh, pretty quickly and, and just pop it on and be good to go. So let's test our new bash for C file. In fact, let's really test it. If I just do an exec bash, it doesn't do it because all that stuff's still pretty much defined, right? But if I exit, what's going to happen? It's going to go back to root. It's going to go back to the root account, right? Because that's how we attached. So now we're attached as root. And now I'm going to go back in. How do I do it? Sue me. Sue dash me. And now I'm me at boosts. And as you can see, nobody died. There's nothing in my bash RC except for the interactive prompt. And even that I could get rid of. And no one's going to die. In fact, we can remove the whole freaking thing. All right. So, you know, I don't, I don't want people to get afraid because there's nothing in your bash RC that can screw you up except your path, but it's not in your bash RC by default. We're going to add it. But when we add it, we're going to do it in a very careful way. The number one thing things pe people break when they're messing with their RC files is their path. And I'm going to deliberately break mine so you can see what happens when you do. Uh, when you break your path, um, and this is another reason. I mean, one of the most common things that those installer scripts loves to do without asking you is screw with your path. And it's not uncommon for one of those install scripts to do the wrong thing and screw your path up. And now the thing has broken your ability to log in. And believe me, cuss words fly when that happens. Because, I mean, you want to, like, track them down and send them a strongly worded letter to their face. Um, so, so let's do this. I'm going to break it. So my path is actually set not by me, but we're going to echo the path. You guys remember that secret? Does anybody remember the super cool? Okay, for, for 150 points, this is a big one. All right, for 150 points, how do I pretty print my path using a parameter expansion? Do, 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 do. It's a big one. That's a tough one. We didn't cover, we covered that very quickly a long time ago. And it requires, it requires bash parameter expansion, which is why it's so many points. All right, here's how. Oh, you got it, Juan. Juan's got it, I think. Let's try it. Echo dash E, because for the escapes, if you don't do it, you, know, you can either do echo dash E or you can do print. Front half, either one. He did, he had it saved. <laughs> Good for you, that counts. That counts. <laughs> so this, this, this means replace, find and replace. It's not really a regex, but it kind of seems like one. Replace all the colons with line returns to get the wonderful, pretty printed path for your viewing pleasure. Um, 
Prior to expansions for the win, man, I swear, they, they save you so much hassle. It's worth learning them early. And learn them early, because then you'll be like me. You'll be like 45. It's like, why did I learn parameter expansion 20 years ago? <sighs> it would have saved me so much time if I just learned it right. Which is why I'm doing the boost, people. You might tell me I'm full of it on some things. But in other things, at least you'll know that stuff's out there. So you don't have to be 53 and... And learn for the first time in your life that you can run backslash anything to turn off the aliasing. You know about that, right? <laughs> there's there's so many things that I did. Or that witch is not positive. That was another one we found out. All right. Uh, let's do another another 10 minutes today, 10, 20 minutes, and we'll, we'll start. Uh, so all we've really done is start, start with a fresh, clean slate. Uh, strictly speaking, I think it's probably time for us to do at least one thing from our list. And and what is the first thing on our list? Our first thing in his list is setting all the options, right? So set the bash options, variables, and history settings. Um, you oh god, why would you why would you do that? Why would you do that with no quoted path on top of that? Well, he's obviously trolling me. <laughs> obviously trolling me. Uh, okay, so what do we got here? So. I don't remember what we Oh yeah. All right. So this is this is my original plan. So I'll stick with my original plan. My original plan is to look at my bash RC file here and to go through it one line at a time and help you understand it, make it pretty and everything. Okay. So, um this uh yeah. Hmm. This is a trick that I don't think I'm going to need anymore. You know why? Oh no, no, no. I do need that. I do need this. You know why? That's funny that it's not in the main one. All right, so, uh, huh. You, you might not want to put that in. Okay, so let's start over. Yeah, you got your bash RC all ready to go? Let's start writing it. Here we go. So the this line right here is something I added with this new engagement that I'm on because my RC file was blowing out the things that were being included for the whole system. So this actually burned me. It cost me about an hour of work. I had not been loading the bash RC from the system and therefore was missing things uh, that would normally, I think bash RC gets loaded automatically. In fact, I'm almost positive it does. Uh, which is why I'm curious about why that's there. Let's see if we can get away without it, though. Let's let's uh, you know what. Let's test this hypothesis. Now that we have a container, we can actually do this. Um, it might have just been the way I was doing my path, actually. If I think if I remember now. So this bash RC and Etsy bash RC, no matter what, you get this right. Uh, this which is funny because look at all this extra stuff that it's doing all over again that it was already doing before, right? So I actually I don't think I need that line. I'm gonna get rid of it. You know why I had it? I had it there because uh, the way I was doing path before, I was not adding to an existing path. I was blowing out the previous path, which is a super bad idea. Because if somebody adds anything to the path for the whole system, you lose out on it. You don't get it. We're gonna to come to that on on path day. We're not gonna do that today. All right. So here's my case statement, same as before, um, and but I I got rid of it so you can type it in. And I don't, th I don't think it's even in here. Look at this. It's not. <gasps> Look at this. Look what they're doing. That's cheating. Oh, they're so cheating. That is cheating. That's cheating. They're checking to see whether your PS1 is actually, ve that variable is non-empty to check to check whether you're interactive or not. That is such a bad idea. Don't do that. This might be old and you know, stuff like that, but it works everywhere. So I'd rather you do that than, I mean, yes, it's a bash RC, right? I don't know, do what you want. If, if you want to use that newfangled way to do your bash thing, and it, that only works in bash and bash related shells, go, so be it. But this is how I would add it. All right, so let's do that then. VI bash RC, and we're almost done. Whoops. Bash RC. So, uh, we're going to be looking at case this 
Now, I don't even know what that is. Let's go see what that is. I think it's the interactive uh, stuff. I think it's under... I think it's under man bash, under uh, special variables. I think it's under special variables. Variables. Variable, 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 variable. This thing's like 800 pages long. This is the bash man page. It's worth a read though if you want to do it someday, but I have not read the whole thing. I read most of it. With all bash flags. Yeah, it has all of the bash flags in it, right, Taffetanes? Yeah, I'm just trying to find the exact uh, kind of summary of it. Here we go. Special special parameters. Here we go. So this one, the dash, expands to the current option flags as specified upon invocation by the set built-in command uh, or those set by the shell itself, such as the dash I option. So all of these options that we're going to be adding to the shell, uh, no clobber interactive, things like that, are going to be represented in this this thing. In fact, we could probably echo it and see. Yep, there it is. So I don't know what they all mean, but you can see that they're there. The I is the thing that means I'm interactive. And so that's what we're doing here. So by the way, we didn't get a chance to cover case before, so let me cover it really quick. Uh, there's a really common recipe, a need. People in Shell, they ask all the time, how can I tell if one string, a substring, is contained within another string? And the standard way to do this in POSIX Shell is to use case. And it's not intuitive. It's very counterintuitive, actually. Uh, but this is how you do it. And the way you do it is you use a glob star match and you put your substring in the middle. And then if it does that, do what you want. That's that's true. That matched, right? And and then you can say stuff like um, it's putting tabs in. I'm so sorry. You guys might want to just use we are we haven't customized our VA over here yet, have we? Wait, what am I on? Am I on the right thing? I'm probably not even on the right thing. I don't know where I am, so I'm kind of scared. Oh, I am on. Why am I getting color? I should not have been getting color. That was weird. It made me think I was on the wrong system. All right, here we go. So, uh, case. Oh, wow. I guess we get color. All right. So, case uh, this. So, that's what we're looking in. And and we might as well write ESAC here. And then we're going to put the thing we're trying to find out. It's, it's, tabs are perfectly fine in POSIX. I just don't like them. There's also no need to indent here if you don't want. So that says, if it, VI is doing this for me. I'm not even doing it. VI is doing it. It's trying to fix it. Uh, so so what are we going to put in that into that? I'll say, uh, boom, boom. That means that we're interactive, all right? And if we're not interactive, I mean, every other case, we want to return. And that will just cause the program to exit, Okay. You have to use two of these things, semicolons, uh, to end it, to end the thing. You can actually have multiple lines here and have semicolons in between each one, right? So that's what case does. Make sure you read about case. Uh, case is your best friend when you want to match a substring. End of story on that. Okay, so now we have we know that it's going to be an interactive shell. Now, why why do you want it to be an interactive shell? There might be cases where you're running a script or something. And you don't want your bash RC to run. You know what I'm saying? So like anytime bash RC runs every time a bash program runs. So if a bash program picks up a new one or, you know, logs in or some other thing, or if there's something else that's using uh, this account or something, it, you don't want it to necessarily always run it in interactive mode. So you don't, you want to put stuff down. This allows you to put stuff down here, being sure that it's going to have to do with another user on the other side. And it's not running, uh, you know, in the background or something like that. So that's why you're doing that check. All right. And let's see how much time we got. We got 10 minutes left and we're going to do all of our, we're going to do all of these, these environment variables. So, um, the only thing you know about environment variables is that you have to export them. Otherwise they don't live outside of your immediate shell. So you don't need to export environment uh, variables if you don't want anything you run to use them. If, if you don't care about your other scripts having access to these variables, 
you don't need to export them. Remember they talked about the process tree, right? Where it kind of screws down, right? So whenever you export something, that means everybody gets it. If you don't export it, only the top level gets it. And, and so that's the thing. Uh, you don't have to ex export any of these um, uh, if you don't want. Just just is what you would do. I uh, we're I just want you to have a section for this. Uh, maybe make a section, say environment uh, variables. Okay. Uh, there's really not as you know there was no environment variable set in the original one. There is a couple that I would set though. However, um, term obviously term equals. Uh, X term 256 colors and in the old days they would have screamed bloody murder at me for hard coding this Because how dare you this script is supposed to be able to detect what terminal it's on. I don't give a shit. Sorry I know what my terminal is and I know what it's capable of and you can listen to me. I Like this guy. Oh, I like you too, John Okay, so so then you got X term 256 colors and then we'll do this uh, I set a few other things for myself, none of which you necessarily need. There are two that you really do need, though. It, you're set your editor to VI. If you want to, you can put it Vim. I don't care. And then visual, set visual to that as well. If you don't do that, you're going to use commands like cron tab. Um, your TTY has color? Wow, that's cool. Um, so, so there. Uh, these other things are not mandatory. These are things that I have made. The editor and visual are pretty standard throughout the thing. Uh, everything else you can skip. We're not doing any Python yet, but when we do, oh my God, you want this one. <laughs> this one will keep it from uh, TTY Streamer or Riot. I will do it. We, we might TTY Stream. Actually, uh, I think John figured out how to do it. He's been bothering me to do it. Um, yeah, he figured out how to do TTY Streaming. Which I think would be cool as hell. All right, so there's your variables. Uh, I have a test here to see if I have speller, and if I do, I'm going to go ahead and set vim spell. We don't need any of those right now. Go path, go bin. We don't need these. You'll need these when we do go eventually, but you don't need it for now. So that's all you need for for environment variables. The most important is you know term for you right now, right? And then what? Let's do the next thing. Let's do options. Uh, all right, so let's do the pager. Let's talk about... Oh, wait, did we do the options already? No, we didn't. Let's do... All right, let's do the pager. Um, actually, this pager stuff is stuff that you're probably just going to need to copy and paste in there, and I'm not going to do it right now. You remember all that stuff we covered with color? You remember? If you put that stuff in there, then when you do... Man, there's, there's people who have been working in Linux and in Terminal and on Solaris and stuff like that for decades and i only found this out in 2020 if you want color man pages and there i guarantee you there's at least one person watching this who's like what you can put color in your man pages because because you didn't know you could do this right i didn't i didn't know this for until until i was literally until i was 50 52 or so and you can you can color your man pages and it's actually based on a sort of a glitch in the old tty stuff and so there you go. You're going to have to just go to my dot files and find that and copy and paste that. But you remember when we covered colors? We covered colors because I knew you were going to want them in your shell. So here they are right here. As I add it, uh, I don't know what all of these codes mean. Uh, I think this one is, I don't know, main, but you can, you can play around with them. Some of these have to be reset. They have to be empty or reset. Um, but, and this is the actual character. That's an actual escape character if you want that. So. So that's your pager. Um, this stuff you do need. So, uh, you know, we can put that. Let's put that in there. I mean, you think it's magenta, bright? I, I didn't know if that was or not. I guess, yeah, maybe. I, I, I want to say, I know you as underline. That one I figured out. But the other ones I couldn't figure the other ones out. No. Um, this stuff, this stuff you have to have if you want to do less pipe. And I didn't have it once and it screamed at me. So again, no shame. Oh my gosh. You see how it's doing all those those tabs? That's super annoying. <laughs> so if we're gonna do the VI, we might have to do that one right away. Should we do our VI like tomorrow? No. There's a few things in VI you should do right away though. And there's no shame in using your mouse for this stuff just to get yourself going. And then and then you can, you know, go back, right? 
So that's your, your pager stuff, and we're just going to save that, colon W to save it. We're almost done for tonight. Uh, we're not going to do colors yet. Uh, where's the options? Where's my shops? Here they are. Uh, bash shell options. So uh, you can decide if you want to add all these or not. Uh, to look at these, if you want to look them up, you can do man bash. And you can look up options, and uh, it, there's like they're all listed here. I'm gonna try to find them now, though. And I'm I'm always coming up with a new one every once in a while. I'm like, what? Okay. Again, the interactive bash shell is totally okay to use all these extra things. Um, let's see if we can find a shopped shopped check jobs. Where is it? Shell shell built-in commands. There it is. Oh no 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 shopped. But shop is where you need to do, um, you know, like if you want to do Globstar, like we talked about, you need to do that. If you want, I actually don't like expand aliases. Why do I have that on? I need to turn that off. I fucking hate that. I mean, I hate that. I hate it. I, I tried a few of these new things and now I'm realizing they're there and they suck. Wind size is pretty good though. That one seems pretty good. Uh, you don't need them. Globstar is probably the one you really want, right? Uh, and it's it's in there. If you do search in man page, you'll find it. Globstar, it'll tell you all about it. There we go. So Globscar, ASCII ranges. Again, this is your system. You add what you want. Uh, less is better though, but whatever. Uh, I, I do want to put another one in there right now though that I just thought of because I've been doing it all over the time. Set, uh, wait, uh, we're going to do history stuff. Set dash O V I. Okay, so history. We're going to do history here. Uh, we'll, we'll do pager here, pager stuff here. Uh, and then we're going to do history stuff. So set dash OVI enables VI mode for your history. It's not the default. The default is Emacs. Don't you dare tell somebody to use control L to clear the screen because it doesn't work everywhere. That only works if they have the default Emacs mode set, which the bash creators decided to use instead of the VI mode, which is superior on every count. Um, so, uh, so go ahead and put that in there. And then the other things for history that you'll go and we'll end for the day is, is here. So, uh, histopend. I like histopend. What does histopend do? Whoopsie. What does histopend do? Go read it. Someone read it to us. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't like control L. You know why? Look, if you really want control L, go ahead and add an alias already, okay? Here you go. Here's your freaking alias. Just do this. Aliases, alias, uh, C equals clear. There, boom. <laughs> Exec bash. Oh, crap. I have a mistake. Do you have a mistake in yours too, guys? I have a mistake in mine. What are you wrong? What did I do wrong? Oh, uh, Kate, I forgot in. Whoopsie. All right. Well, now you saw. All right. It, it won't save history between sessions. No, it doesn't. Yeah. So his depend is what keeps your history there for the next time. Uh, you want his control, ignore both, history size. You might want to make these pretty big. This is completely up to you. Um, but I, I like this stuff here. I'm not, I'm, I'm being really lazy on my, my editing here. There's lots of other ways to do what I just did that are cooler, but I'm just going to cut and paste and clean it up. Uh, CMD. There's no CMT. Oh no. Right. So I have to delete it. There we go. So there's my history and, and I have shopped and a pen. So there's some history stuff. And we have our first alias. We're going to do a lot more as we go. Uh, this is like one of the things I'm actually going to take you through because everyone's got opinions about what to put in this stuff. And my opinions are not, I mean, these opinions are, are wide and varied and they're, they're not covered in books a lot of times. And so I'm just going to cover everything about my configurations and you can give me crap about whether you don't like it or you think there's something better or things that we can all kind of pool our minds here as a community and decide, uh, some of the better things to put in your in your history and why you might want to do it it was it was during such a session that i found out how dangerous not setting 
uh, some of the Vim, in, Vim info configurations is uh, export man page, man page or less SR use color for color man pages. Uh, I've did, I didn't know that was the thing that you could do until just now. Savage did not know that. I do th I do know that mine will work anywhere. <laughs> so I don't know. That looks really cool though. Let's put it in there. I'm gonna put it in there right now. I'm gonna I'm gonna steal your idea, Savage. I mean, we're a community here, and I do not know everything. God knows. That's what's so great about Linux. There's like so many different things to know. Um. You can have that for free. Okay. <laughs> man pager. There's actually an environment variable called man pager now. <sighs> today I learned. Today I learned as a man pager. I told you I don't know everything. So there's some things though that are just blasphemy that I will never do. Man uh LS. <laughs> There's no man page. Uh, you'll need to have to, to comment out the colors you've set for before issues. I thought I already had colored man pages. Oh, no, no, no. I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. Uh, you'll need to, to comment out colors you set. Oh, the, uh, the, yeah, on this one, obviously. So, but I'm not seeing it on the other one, though. It's mostly because there's no man. <laughs> Sudo apt install man. I'm telling you, these containers, you're going to be tired of installing crap because you're going to be like, that's really funny because we unminimized it and it didn't even install man. Oh my God. Make it stop. <laughs> Make it stop. I just want a man page. That tells me there is no dash D option. Yeah, I, 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 I'm, I'm going to temporarily undo this because I'm afraid. I'm so afraid. I have a feeling I have to have dirt colors set or something. <laughs> this is one of those cases. Remember I told you the case where it's still there? Okay, because it's still there. Watch. If I echo man page, what is it? Pager. Right? Watch. To get rid of it, I have to do this unset man pager. Uh, and now... I should be okay. Yeah, there we go. Well, it's mapped to if not Bell exactly. So I got my 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 man pages back, and so far, uh, I'm inclined to keep what I have. <laughs> but we'll check it out later and see if we can improve on that. Uh, this has been a great night. Uh, it's, it was a little bit shorter than the other ones, as I mentioned. And um, what did I have something wrong in there? Oh, did I have it? Did I have it wrong? Yeah. If you if you want to come back to us with color on map pages, there we can go through that. I love that option though. So make sure you let us know and report back tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow at seven. Um, we'll be going from seven to eight from now on, and uh, a certain amount of that time before or after that time could be for questions. Uh, I won't be putting any question and answer sessions inside of the actual stream. So, um, uh, I I because they not everybody wants that and if you do have a question though come on in to the IRC anytime we're on 24 7 uh either on YouTube or Twitch or uh you know Twitch IRC if you want and we're, we're talking about getting a Libra chat session as well and bridging it or Discord and bridging that too I might do that over the weekend we'll see and uh it is bedtime for for all for lots of y'all uh I will be back doing videos with them have a great one see you tomorrow <laughs>